Well, that's kind of easy because I suppose all of those things, artist, academic, professional areas, are all revolving around uh, engaging with Indigenous design knowledge. And so uh, that, that is a broad term, but um, each of those processes focuses in specifically on a specific country or a specific tribe, and then really understanding what constitutes them what constitutes them in regards to design, because I'm a designer, and thus that's that's the kind of main focus that I look at these ideas with. And then and then the question of how do we reinterpret that, how do we abstract that into the profession? So um, that's, in the academic sense, I've been doing a lot of writing, PhD work, thesis, making arguments around Aboriginal urban space, um, and Redfern, how that, that constitutes as something quite specific and special. But then in profession, it's much more around, all right, we have a brief, here's, here's a project, here's the scope of works. How can you start to engage with this sort of knowledge? I think historically it's been a challenge working in, the, in these environments. However, um, I'm seeing it being more of a easy set. And I think, you know, when you mentioned the idea of neoliberalism, I think originally in regards to Aboriginal Australia, neoliberalism was a force that was smothering, it was, it was um, uh, acting as a, f a force against um, the, the production of Aboriginal knowledge, I suppose. However, I think that's changing. It's becoming yeah. easier to, to talk about this stuff, to um, get clients and project managers to be persuaded and go, yeah, actually, I, I think people in general, Australia as a, as a whole, is starting to see value in what Aboriginal Australia can provide and and at least from the way I'm talking about it is design and and part of what I'm involved in is pointing out the nuances or pointing out the differences yeah it's not all dot paintings it's you know in Darug country in Sydney it's about the line you know the line has specific meaning it, it represents father sky mother earth things like that yeah. whereas you go out to the west uh, it's much more about the dot so I think a lot of people may not have known that, and just pointing that out, they go, okay, and then and then off they go on the the journey of understanding what came in this location before us. I think um, a lot of this stuff is just a gateway towards appreciating where you are. You know, everyone can appreciate that. Everyone wants to know, oh, what's the history of where I am right now? What's the history of so yes, there's colonial history, but there's also Aboriginal history, and so getting getting you know it's almost like a little feeder into that into that world, and, and then people start to get more interested, and then and then at least from my perspective, I'd like to see more Aboriginal design influence in our built environment. That's kind of my main goal. You know, I often talk to academics or people from international places, and they're like, Where, where's all the Aboriginal? people, where's all the Aboriginal design? Mm. I'm like, well, you're speaking to one and, um, you know, there is some stuff, but I, I kind of also get what they mean because, you know, I look at what um, our iwi or Maori colleagues are doing in, in New Zealand and, you know, they're, they're, they're embracing design, um, iwi design knowledge very, very strongly. I suppose one thing I'd think of is uh, shifted thinking. So that, you know, that's one thing I, I involve, I'm, I'm involved with. And, and as I mentioned to you just earlier, a lot of what I'm doing is, is getting people to be persuaded or be convinced that engaging with Indigenous design knowledge is good for design outcomes. It, it does produce interesting design spaces and places. Um, but also the idea of uh, bringing them along on the journey. So they need to shift their thinking in terms of how are we going to do this. Yeah. So that's a big barrier, you know, talking about breaking barriers or shifting barriers or, or changing the field. I guess another one would be, um, I don't know really a, a better word for it, but connecting to sense of place or, or emotions of place. Actually landscape architecture isn't just about clients. It's not just about, it. it, it landscape can move people. It can it can convince people, it can, and, and that's a tremendously powerful thing. Yeah.